Welcome to a demonstration video for the SANS Institute. This demonstration video is going to cover a little bit about the Web Scarab tool that's used for doing web application testing and auditing. Uh, the SANS Institute runs several different classes that deal with web penetration testing, that deal with uh, web application programming, uh, but we also have two classes that deal with auditing. Uh, Audit 507, which does advanced system auditing, and Audit 521 that takes care of PCI compliance. In this video today, we're going to take a look at some demonstrations of how the Web Scarab tool can be used to do some web application testing. Now, in the SANS Audit 507 class, we actually have an entire full day devoted to using, well, not just this tool, others as well, but to devoted to doing web application testing from a security auditor's standpoint. And in Audit 521, we just briefly introduced this topic, and in fact, this demonstration video is used as a part of the class to help on-demand students see what's possible using this type of tool. So with that background out of the way, let's get started here in taking a look at the actual tool. So the tool that we're going to be using is called Web Scarab, and in using the tool we've got a demonstration web application that we actually make available through one of the virtual machines that you obtain in the class. Now this virtual machine has this tool installed that was actually written by David Rhodes. So this is his tool. It's a very, very useful tool. He's from Maven Security. He's a uh, web application testing professional. He does quite a bit of this. And put this application together to, to, to demonstrate many of the vulnerabilities that are extremely common to find in web applications today. The tool that we're using to do the testing is actually called Web Scarab. So here we can see I've already got it installed. This is a Java-based tool, which is very handy for us because it means that we can get this tool to run on just about any platform we face today, provided we have a Java runtime environment. Now this particular interface, we're running on a Macintosh here, so the interface does look a little bit different than what you'll find on a Windows machine because of differences in the Java virtual machine. Uh, for instance, in a Windows machine, these will appear, will look more like tabs, though you can see here it's just a long string of different menu options that are available. And we can move between them, or we can even just click specifically on the one that we'd like to find. To use this tool, it's very important to make sure that our web browser is configured properly. This tool acts as a man-in-the-middle proxy, allowing us to intercept web requests as they're passing from the web browser to the server. It's also possible, of course, to intercept the responses coming back from the server, though that's much less interesting in terms of doing testing. In order to get it to work properly, though, we have to make sure our browser is configured to use the right proxy listener. So by moving here into the proxy tab and under listeners, we can see that there is currently a listener running on 127.0.0.1 and port 8008. So if you don't have one running, you can just start one up. Down here, actually, you can configure a uh, proxy to listen, and you can even control the speed of that so you can simulate, for instance, the speed of a modem to see what some of, some of your customers might be seeing in looking at your web application. But for us, we're interested in reconfiguring our server, our browser, excuse me, to make sure that it's going through this proxy. So I see it's at 127.0.0.1, port 8008. What I'm going to do is switch back over to Safari, the web browser I'm using here, and I'm going to open up the preferences for that. Now the preferences I'm looking for uh, turn out to be under the advanced settings in uh, Safari. Of course, if you're using a different browser, you just have to take a look at what your proxy settings would be. They're often under the Tools menu, under Settings, or sometimes under the Edit menu, under Preferences. And then just go and find out where the proxy settings are. Now for Safari, it turns out that the proxy settings are not actually inside of the browser. Excuse me, they're actually implemented in the uh, excuse me, the operating system itself. So I'm going to turn on the web proxy and the secure web proxy, which means that my regular web traffic and my SSL traffic are both going to try to go through a proxy. And then I can configure these individually and change, in this case, just the port number. The port number is going to be 8008. And I'm going to make sure that both of them are configured the same way so that if I end up handling any SSL pages, those will also be going through that proxy. Once those settings are set, I can simply click OK and then apply that and close up my network settings, get rid of my preferences, and now I'm going to refresh this page. 